love all things fall, all things Halloween, all things holiday, October. Um, just literally like from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, we are jam packing it full of fun Halloween recipes, of Halloween outings, of decorating the house for the holiday. And so today I thought I would do a little fall inspo video. So you can see like how I did all these things on the blog or Instagram or TikTok. Um, also, I'll take this chance to remind you, if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Mallory Irvin, just my name. Um, we are trying to do the TikTok. I personally am just not a fan of doing the TikToks, but I'm really trying to do the TikToks. Um, and we have different content on TikTok that um, isn't on Instagram. So I've been having fun with a platform that really scared me. I just feel like, like I'm such a, I'm just so used to Instagram. So uh, on TikTok, my name's just Mallory Irvin too. I'll link all these at the end. And then um, pretty much any platform there is, we are there doing fall things. Simplicity is the thing that I feel like if you can just get out of your own head and be simple with things, you can execute all of these things. People look at um, the stuff that we do in, in my house and like how we do everything big. And they're like, how do you do it all? Here's how I do it all we make it as simple as possible. Okay, so this is a dahlia, and a dahlia is like a peony is in the spring, and I feel like it's a standalone flower. So if I'm making my own arrangements, like sometimes in different seasons, I feel like I have to find five different kinds of flowers and really like beef up the arrangement. A dahlia and a peony speaks for itself. So do not try and have another flower outshine a dahlia because it ain't gonna happen. I just got two bunches of dahlias, from my local um, wholesale flower place and I arranged them. So all you have to do is get, this is the size, this one I got from Pottery Barn like a year ago, um, but you could really use any size. You don't wanna do something that's super tall and slender because a dahlia is a really heavy flower at the top, so you don't want something that's gonna come crashing down. So I kinda like a short, fat arrangement for a dahlia. I try and keep all the greenery out of the base of the arrangement. That's gonna keep it um, good for longer. And another flower that is at the opposite end of the spectrum, instead of this big meaty flower, it's a very dainty, beautiful flower that I love for the fall and the holiday. It's this, ch I think it's called a chocolate Cosmo. And it's this beautiful, like burgundy, chocolatey, deep color. All I do, I take, the, they come in a little bunch like this from your, your flower place uh, and a rubber band. And they're super little and dainty. All I do is arrange them kind of like whimsically in a tall little flute base like this. And um, I try and do them just a little bit different of a variation and they just kind of dance around like that. They don't last a super long time, but I love this flower. And I think the color is so fall. It's so easy to do. Look how simple and easy this is. I love this arrangement for like a, um, a edge of a bathtub or like uh, a bedside table or something like that. Two easy things to inspire you for the fall there in the flower department. Now, on to food. The most important piece of the autumnal, autumn, autumnal, autumn. <laughs> I went through the whole process of showing how to make these on Instagram. So you can go over back and like refer to my little um, highlight tab to see how to make these and the recipes. In the spirit of simplicity is, I like to t take things that maybe you've already made in the past that you know your family likes, like Rice Krispie treats or um, peanut butter chocolate bars or Nutter Butter little bars and make them into Halloween fall treats that your kids will love. Hang on, mine just walked in the door one second. Oh, you're scared of all of the Halloween decorations? Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you excited? Someone is very scared of the skeletons sitting in the chair. It's very spooky in here, guys. Mom's been getting everything ready for you guys. Okay, so Ford is now reviewing all the treats that I've made while he's been gone all day. Oh, that, oh that's very sweet. Shepard's a little scared still of the skeleton in his Here, lunch chair. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is this little pumpkin Rice Krispie treat. Basically just a Rice Krispie treat with um, some orange food coloring. And then it's a little, it's a little Mike and Ike. Oh yeah. There's a Sunday's crawling. 
Okay. It's a little Mike and Ike in the top. Clearly there's a lot going on here, so I want something that's very easy. Oh. A drop or a few drops of orange food coloring in this and it's gonna make it look like a pumpkin. Next, I did, you had like the chocolate peanut butter um, cookies. Okay. We did them in the shape of a tombstone okay. and then I put white icing go, over the top. Go and made these little tombstone things. And they're really cute. And lastly, you can see the ones that Shepard is licking every single one of. All this is is a Nutter Butter. So you can buy this at the grocery store. And then it's white chocolate melted. And then I just took a spoon and what I did, I just went over it with a spoon and this back and forth shape to kind of make this mummy look. And then these eyes, you can get them off of Amazon or at Michael's. Um, Shepard thinks that he's adding to it, which he oh. is, which is perfect because I needed a sous chef. And they look so cute. I feel like these are good for like kids' Halloween parties, given that there's not a peanut allergy. Also, these are from last year, and I don't remember. I think we got them off of Amazon. But if you wanted to just get a box cupcake mix, you can add those eyeballs on top of a chocolate cupcake cupcake with chocolate icing and these look like little spiders. So another thing that I really love to do for fall and Halloween and October, any holiday really or season that's coming up, I love to change out the boys bookshelf. So boys keep growing, they get interested in different books, they sometimes like spooky things. Sometimes I get to pick when they're like under two and they don't know the difference. But now Ford really is into Halloween too. He loves skeletons and zombies and all the scary things of Halloween and ghosts and bats and stuff. So in the past I've done more like cutesy Halloween, um, but I did it this time with like some ghosts and bats and I'm gonna put a little skeleton coming out of his teepee that's probably gonna scare the living daylights out of him, but I mean, he likes it. We had this big empty wall and my decorator, uh, April, her team, they were looking at like, how did we do this room kind of affordably and cute? And they were like, let's just put these bookshelves here. So these are two of these floating bookshelves right next to each other, one, two and then four um, shelves of them. And then we just fill these up with books and it's like a whole wall of decor that was so easy and so inexpensive to do. So this year I just took these ghost garlands, I'll link everything, and I did kind of this little zigzag drape. These are ones that I had from last year that were off of Amazon. And then also these little bats are off of Amazon too. And I thought that was kind of cute to look like the flight was extending. I added some new books. So this was a new book that we got this year. Got a lot of classics on here too, like it's Pumpkin Day Mouse is a classic. Good Night Moon, like you can even use books that you already have, but that kind of have the holiday color. Like I love that it has the green and the orange and the yellow, so it kind of looks like it blends with Halloween stuff. So it's a very, very easy way to decorate for your kids, make them feel special and, you know, like it's a special season coming up, but it's not gonna break the bank. It's something that you already have on your wall and it looks super cute. Wow, that's really cool. Wow, man, that skeleton, for not having any muscle, he really is climbing a stair great for Here you go, sir. Ah! I was recipe testing um, some different recipes today. I did three different kind of like um, fall, like main recipes, like a dinner recipe or lunch recipe or something like that. Okay, so this first one is a fantastic recipe. So it's got sweet potatoes in it. It's got, sorry, I cooked it earlier, but it's got sweet potatoes in it. It's got kale in it. It's got ground turkey. Um, it's a really great main piece of a meal or you could use it as a side. Um, and it's one of my favorite, it just tastes like literally like fall in a pan. And I wanted to do like a traditional soup um, with the fall ingredients. So I love a butternut squash in the fall. You can find them pre-chopped at Whole Foods or at Trader Joe's, or you can chop it yourself if you want to go all Martha Stewart on it. So it's butternut squash, kale, uh, it's got those cannellini beans, and you can also make this easy and use cannellini beans from a can, or you can soak them overnight if you also want to go Martha Stewart on that as well. More power to you. I'm trying to cook three things at once, so that's as Martha as I can get. Um, this kind of mimics a vegetable soup, 
which is great too, and it's great for several days. You could freeze this if you wanted to, but when you make a recipe this good, um, usually everybody eats it all. And lastly, Kyle loves a beef stew. So I wanted to try this apple cider beef stew. So instead of a traditional beef stew with just like um, potatoes and carrots in it, this one has a little bit different of um, a taste with the acidic um, apple cider vinegar in there. It's got just the traditional thing that's, that's in a beef stew. And then also like if you had some meat in your freezer or something like that that you wanted to get rid of, you know, it's a good thing to throw it in a stew because it's not like you're making a steak or something like that. And everybody loves a stew or a chowder or a soup um, whenever the weather's getting cold. If you have like a situation like I do where you have prediabetes or whatever it is, if you're just trying to cut down on sugar, um, sugar obviously is a no, which really stinks, especially when you come into holiday season and stuff like that. So I like to find ways to participate in desserts um, that I can eat. I can do sugar substitutes like monk fruit, which is what's in this. There's even one called swerve that I can do every now and then, but I'm not supposed to do things like, you know, um, like artificial sweetener, like the bad kind of artificial sweetener. So this angel I just made with monk fruit and then there's a uh, brown sugar alternative and you just do a one-to-one -one ratio, ratio, so, and it's really, really good. The consistency is always going to be a little bit different when you're not using sugar, especially in baking. Hey, would you like to try this? Let's see, a real sugar eater, how he likes it. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this angle. Mmm. Mmm. How is it? It's a diabetes cake. You like it? Well, that's a true test right there. If the sugar eating child likes it, then um, you will too. Lastly, in this inspo video, I want to talk about fall fashion. I've really been trying to step up my fashion game and have really been having a fun time with it. Fall is a time where, you know, the weather is changing and I feel like um, there are so many holidays back to back that you can really have fun with holiday fashion without making it look like chintzy or like the bride of frankenstein i would dress like the bride of frankenstein every dang day but i know that like life goes on outside of holiday and i need to look a little bit more appropriate and put together you guys if you watched last year you saw i literally love these bobble bar earrings these are just the little ghosts that they did last year they did pearls i also put these in all of my little teacher's gifts for the fall i feel like you can wear a black turtleneck a black pair of leggings a little sneaker or like these shoes that i have on right now you're gonna love them these little feather shoes i mean and these sparkle leggings so these are jeffrey campbell these ones but I found a $19 dupe on Amazon that are almost like just as good this is just a little sweater that I got off of Amazon too and I've got a little cami MYC underneath it and it made it into a cute little outfit they did a necklace this year so I got this cute little pearl skeleton necklace it's really cute to layer um, like I said I, I always get extra of these because I put them in teachers gifts candy corns I mean so think about these with like monochromatic cute outfits or a little Halloween sweatshirt with like a legging and a little sneaker. These, if you will, if you really want to go understated, um, you can do a smaller one. Or if you have a second pierce, you could also use this little candy corner, this pumpkin for that. The cats, for all you cat women out there. These cute little skeletons are the ones that I had in my ears at the beginning of the video. So they're the same skeletons from last year, except for they are pearls. These are just the witches and these little pumpkins are so cute so I said I found these little $19 ones the dupes are the ones that I have on um, they're from Amazon they're true to size if you wanted to throw these on because feathers are really in right now um, and you don't have to worry about ruining on because a feather something like if the feathers come off the feathers are gone so it's nice to not pay an arm and a leg for something like this and be able to just wear them and have fun in them and do all your fall festivities in them. And then like the Bottega clutch is really in. So I looked at the Bottega clutch and it's like $2,700 ish. And I just said to myself, I cannot spend that on something that is a clutch. It's not a practical everyday bag. So I scoured trying to find um, the best ones of these and 
Uh, my friends at the consult studio that helped me like with some styling stuff, they were like, this is such a good dupe for the Bottega one. When they brought it to me, I was like, this is it. It feels so um, buttery. It also has, and I think it's like $20 or so. It has a strap too if you wanted to wear the strap, but um, I really like to hold it just like the Bottega clutch. Look at this. This is off of Amazon too. And I've really been trying to like wear more. It's funny because spring colors are almost in for this fall. So you always think of your fall tones, but even like pinks and baby blues and stuff like that are in. And people are doing that clueless look. I don't even know what to call that vibe, but like a grandpa sweater over pink cami NYC with like a light wash denim. I've seen designer bags like this that are just so expensive. And I'm not gonna get an all pearl bag that is designer because it's such a trendy piece. I'm not gonna carry it every day. So this one, like I said, was on Amazon and it was like, I don't know, 30 something dollars. I know y'all have a ton of sweaters laying around your house. But a way to make them different is to add these little sweater pins. So these are all off of Amazon, I'm pretty sure. So um, I've got little pearl ones. I've got like the one that I have on right now. Like I said, don't look at all my flower. But I pulled this sweater together with this and it just is a little pin. You stick it through, screw this top on. And it makes this to where it almost fits like a grandpa sweater instead of a open sweater. That's just a little bit of inspiration for you guys. Like I said, I really went to town on Instagram and TikTok and the blog to show like the behind the scenes and the recipes and the specifics on all this stuff. But I will link everything that I can below. Thank you guys so much for watching this and we've really missed doing videos. So we're trying to do more as we come into the holiday because it's some of our favorite things to do. So happy fall, y'all. <laughs>